You're listening to The College Light Bulb, presented by The Coaching Educator, where we illuminate your college path. Here's your host, Rebecca M. Carroll. Hello, everybody. I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, and... Uh, I'm Nathan Nunes. Nathan, so you are on The College Light Bulb. And you are one of the um, one of my grotto buddies. So I joined a networking group, and Nathan is here to tell us a little bit about himself, as well as the business, and what do you do, and what's what's your deal? Yeah. So again, I'm Nathan Nunes. I uh, yeah, I know Rebecca because I'm in a networking group called Grotto, uh, just a group of small businesses who uh, refer small and medium businesses who refer business to each other. Do you um, have lunch together? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh-huh. There's more than just referrals. I mean, it's it's just good relationships. Um, but yeah, I'm 21, and uh, I got married like two years ago. And I like to tell people that because most people don't get married that young, and I think it's kind of cool. But besides that, I... My brother uh, did. Yeah? I have a 40-year-old, yeah, 40-year-old nephew. Yeah. Right out of school, two weeks after school, high yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> two weeks, but so yes. Yeah. So but I, it is, uh, it's good. Yeah, I love it. It's been really good. Um, but my family owns a printing and marketing business, International Minute Press. So we work with uh, small, large businesses, but a lot of mid-market businesses. We provide printing and marketing solutions. Um, layman's terms, that means like business cards, flyers, lots of direct mail, postcards, occasionally called drunk mail. That sort of thing <laughs> is my business. Uh, and we have a lot of fun. We're innovating the field. Um, we've combined a lot of online advertising in parallel to um, print advertising. Um, and, uh, yeah, I get to work with my father, and uh, he's an excellent mentor, so I have a lot of fun. Well, yeah, I heard you talking about Google Ads and that you were starting to do those pieces. So tell me about it. Yeah, so we really like direct mail. And, um, you know, one of the things that's really nice about direct mail and what marketers enjoy about direct mail is it's extremely predictable. So if you mail to a thousand homes and you know you have a response rate of one or two percent, uh, you can project that, you can extrapolate that to 10,000 or 100,000 homes or businesses. And it's extremely predictable in being able to do that. So businesses love it because when you can give businesses a good proposal for their return on investment, that's accurate and you come in pretty accurate to what that is, um, they're a lot happier than with some other forms of advertising where it's much harder to ensure that those ad dollars are going to get spent in a way that works. Yeah. But you also do and online. What, yeah. So what we didn't like about that, what was hard, is that some of our clients wouldn't realize that direct mail is working. And the thing is, is 90% of people are going to Google a business before they go in. Even if you heard about that business, the carpet cleaner or the furniture yep. company, in the postcard, you're going to go, oh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, XYZ furniture company, let's Google them, let's check the reviews. And then I'm going to go through their website or give them a call. And so what we want to do is... Uh, partner, you know, and create a lot of ads that are given driven to the exact same people, both on Facebook and then uh, with Google AdWords and Google uh, retargeting. So after they've gone to your website, they'll continue to see ads. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've just seen a huge success with showing ads to the same people. Uh, we also provide tracking, so you know exactly when the postcards hit. So there's some other fun things, but integrating the cross media marketing has been really successful. Wow. So you have not finished school. Mm-mm. So you ma did you go when did you go into school? So I did a fair chunk of college while I was in high school. Okay. Um, I went to yeah Skyview High School and the Nampa School District uh, has a pretty good network of college opportunity uh, because kind of the three high schools mm-hmm. bus each other around to provide as many. Uh, AP and uh, what do we call them concurrent credit classes yes. that were available. I mean we can't just call them college classes. No. Yeah. And that it, we take in high school, they have to yeah. be either dual enrollment, yep. AP dual enrollment, mm-hmm. AP concurrent. Which part of that was a headache because I took, yeah. I was a little bit picky. I didn't take any of the CWI specific ones. I took NNU and BSU because at the time I had different plans. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a headache. And then actually going to college afterwards, uh, getting everybody to recognize, you know, what I had. So uh, it was good yes. to get that out of the way. And especially mo- more so even than just having those credits. I think my brain needed that stimulation as a high schooler. Yeah. Without it, I would have not enjoyed school as much. Well, and it's a good strategy for many careers and many, and, and really across the country, 
And what I was just saying before we did this podcast was whenever you take any college credit of any kind, you should always, always, always print out your syllabus and save it because sometimes you do have to argue to get another college to yeah. accept the credit. And if you have the evidence, then generally it will work. Yeah. So, so what are you studying? So I just switched from uh, business, uh, specifically marketing, business marketing, to engineering. And yeah, that's was been a big, wow. big decision for me. Okay, so why? Uh, mostly because I am struggling to stay engaged with uh, business. And I think a big part of it is I spend a lot of time in application of working with, you know, pretty large companies, applying pretty big, um, you know, campaigns. So I really enjoy that. And yeah, so I struggled a little bit with that. And I love engineering. I have a a full-blown woodworking shop. I I like to build furniture. So I spend all day sitting at a desk right now or talking to people. I like to go home. I like to build stuff. So uh, I just have a lot of passion that way. And I think that my spirit, my desire is to be entrepreneurial entrepreneurial. My father's a serial, serial entrepreneur. He owned uh, six restaurants before the printing company. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that if I'm really diverse, if I have an engineering background and degree, I think that if I then apply that to business, uh, I very well may be better off, especially if I then go and get an MBA or some sort of business specific yes. um, I always crown to, on the engineering yeah, degree. I try to explain to people that it, it's really about getting an MBA, especially depending upon what you want to do in the mm-hmm. future with business. It, it you really you can have whatever you want for a degree. Yep. For an undergraduate. Yep. And that's what I, I feel yeah and that's kind of from talking to a couple of mentors of mine um I, that's kind of what I felt out is uh if if it's going to be easier for me to stay engaged uh mm-hmm. and I'm really passionate or enjoy at least you know that sort of stimulation um and problem solving um then it makes me just as, you know, just as valuable as if it was a business and then an MBA. Mm -hmm. And flexible. You never know when you have to pivot. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the new words. Yeah. New business. Pivot. Pivot. Yeah. I just wanted to get that in the podcast. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we're moving fast. Business is, you got to be able to pivot quick too. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. So generally we ask people if they're using your, their degree. So you haven't really experienced that yet. You're probably using a lot of what you've learned. Yeah. Um, yeah, I use, I definitely use a good chunk of what I've learned, especially, uh, I would say writing skills in college have improved quite a bit from high school. And I just use that constantly, you know, okay. every day, all day. Yeah. And I think people, and especially young people underestimate the value of being able to write a really good email. Oh, you know, when you nice. have something you have to explain to a customer or when you want to sell, um, yeah, being able to craft an email really good and mm-hmm. a good writer and a bad writer does it very different. Yeah, I agree. It's been super valuable as my communication in writing. Absolutely. So if someone wanted to go into the printing business, mm-hmm. what would you recommend? Hmm. Um, so a lot of people kind of approach that because especially younger people or people who are interested in continuing to educate themselves from being passionate about being a designer or some sort of maker, you know, they like screen printing on t-shirts, that sort of thing. A lot of people are kind of passionate from that end. And for those people, I would say continue to build out your portfolio and working in Adobe, specifically, you know, like Illustrator, um, InDesign, Photoshop. I think those are really great skills that if you're passionate on that end, kind of the pre-print uh, or the pre pre-execution of marketing end, that's super interesting. And it's just a, it's, it's not super high cost to continue to, while you're working or while you're going to school, develop those skills. Yeah. Um, and then I think that if you're interested in, you know, printing itself, uh, that would be, an, I don't hear it a lot because it's a trade that's kind of dying being an offset printer. Uh, and that's hard for us because we hire a lot of offset printers. Um, okay. And that's because we, when we're doing like 100,000 postcards, we're still using a traditional press. We also have great digital presses. Um, and you have in-house yeah. machines. Yeah. So that's key. So think like is how a newspaper is printed. business, kinda. say it again. Yeah, International Minute Press. They actually are in-house printing, which yeah. is really a find. So you always want to, you know, that's kind of one of those key secrets that uh, a lot of people who do marketing 
will find the people who are in-house printers. So when there's an in-house printer, (laughs) that's where you want to go and see. So we're pretty excited about finding this international printers. And we will be definitely, we have a whole big PR campaign coming out. So we're very excited to have met you. So any other recommendations? So you're recommending writing. Yeah. So I would say that someone who wants to go into the field should probably, and I say this a lot, take advanced writing. Technical yeah. writing is huge. Yeah. So beyond your English 101 and English 102, you should always be taking either technical writing or um, research writing or yeah. both because you have a lot of electives to burn up. Yeah. And that is definitely helpful. And that um, to at least know or dabble a little bit in design. Yeah, I think that's helpful. As much as you can. Mm-hmm. And then to what about the marketing side? Because you do yeah. it. I mean, I, I was very impressed yeah. when I, you, because we have our little 10 minute or two minute, um, but you did an yeah. educational yeah. bite, sound yeah. bite, and you did a very nice job. Yeah. You're a reader. Yeah. And you didn't mention that. I, I mean, do. I do read a lot. Yeah. So how many are you reading about a book a month? Last year I did 52 books a year, that year. Excellent. But some of them are audio books. I do have to throw mm-hmm. that in. Some people don't think that's like, maybe it's like 50% of a book, you know, in your, mm-hmm. in your count. No, I mean, you have to, I mean, you're in the car <laughs> a lot. Yeah. So, and yeah, I, I do audio. Yeah. I mean, when I'm getting ready in the morning, always audio. Yeah. Audio books are awesome. Yeah. Because you can't always stop. I do. I am a ferocious reader, but I yeah. really, um, I noticed that you were definitely reading some books. So that is wonderful. So again, where can they find you? We're going to put all these links, remember, in our podcast so you can find Nathan. And there's, what's your father's name? Brian Noons. Brian, Nathan. And there was another gentleman that answered the phone. Yeah. So we have 16 people, wow. 16 employees or so. Um, it's a lot of fun. My father runs operations. I manage most of sales and marketing. Um, my mother does our bookkeeping. My brother, who's a year and a half younger than me, runs one of our offset printing presses, um, which he's uh, he's pretty much fully trained. He, he's our second command pressman at this point. Um, and then we have, yeah, 14 other employees that help us out. That is awesome. Yeah. Okay. So again, this is the coaching educator, Rebecca M. Carroll and Nathan Nunes. And we will um, sign out. And hopefully when we get our printing stuff, I am going to show you. I'll do a quick thing on Facebook so you can see how fabulous they come out. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye.